Welcome back. Time now for news from the left. Our president is finding himself to be quite diverse in his old age and has just finally revealed at the age of 79, Joe Biden is culturally Puerto Rican. I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community at home politically. And so we, and we came here for a long time, uh, both for business and pleasure. <laughs> no matter where he goes, the man is a gold mine. Another ridiculous pandering statement for the man who once said he doesn't want his kids growing up in a racial jungle and spoke at the funeral for an exalted cyclops. It is nothing new for Joe Biden, though. Here he was in California back in 1987, lying again. When I was 17 years old, like many of you, I participated in sit-ins to desegregate the restaurants and movie houses of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> Never happened. He actually flipped back and forth on that over the years, depending on the mood and the atmosphere that he was in. Maybe he did it, maybe he didn't. It depends on the situation. The phoniest guy in all of Washington. Here's one more talking about Mandela, South Africa. Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador. Nope. <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> He's Puerto Rican, though. I cannot wait until next Pride Month when Joe, when Joe Biden gives a big speech. He's going to reveal that he was born Jessica Biden and had a double mastectomy and abortion at age 15. And if not for that, he would have never been president of the United States. That's coming up next June. Next up, Ron DeSantis with a warning for looters out there. The other thing that we're concerned about, particularly in those areas that were really hard hit, is, you know, we want to main, make sure we're maintaining law and order. Uh, don't even think about looting. Um, I can tell you, in the state of Florida, uh, you never know what may be lurking behind somebody's home. And I would not want to chance that if I were you, given that we're a Second Amendment state. I love that soundbite. Well, pro-crime MSNBC host Joy Reid was enraged by it, of course. After all, riots are a cornerstone of the BLM movement that she so proudly endorses. Reid jumped on Twitter to label DeSantis a segregationist, saying, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Segregationist Miami Sheriff Walter E. Headley, 1967. Didn't take DeSantis long to return to form. So basically, the messaging is, if you're against looting, you're racist. You just got to let it happen. They just let them walk in and take whatever they want. The looters can do as they please. We learned that in the summer of 2020. Moving on, Governor Gavin Newsom working hard to protect criminals in California and, more importantly, protect our rotten inner city culture that's creating such a horrible quality of life. A new bill will prevent creative expression like rap lyrics from being used inappropriately as evidence in criminal cases, according to Newsom. move comes as Multiple high-profile cases have surfaced where lyrics have been used against rappers who have been arrested. Gavin Newsom is committed to making sure that these rappers' creative expression is not used against them or they are not stereotyped because of their lyrics. So if your song says something like, I'm going to grab my gat and spray the block up, and then you go get a gun and do a drive-by shooting, your lyrics can't be used to show that you were going to do it or you had a motive to do it. California really has their priorities in check. There's nothing else to worry about except that. Finally, a rough opening weekend for a new gay rom-com. And the reasoning, well, because you are a big, fat homophobe. Bros, a romantic comedy about uh, a lot of gay people, apparently, bombed at the box office. Movie cost $22 million to make. Opening weekend only pulled $4.8 million since the release on Friday. Billy Eichner, the movie's lead character and co-writer of the film, took to Twitter to straight blame people for being homophobic, saying that's just the world we live in. Unfortunately, even with glowing reviews, great Rotten Tomatoes scores and a cinema score, etc. Straight people, especially in certain parts of the country, just didn't show up for bros. And that's disappointing. But it is what it is. Now, how great are the reviews? Who did the reviews? Who knows? Maybe it's not that good of a movie. Maybe it's a million different things. Maybe it's just content nobody wants to see. Who knows? Blaming people for not going to see your movie because they're homophobes is pretty weak, whoever that guy is.